these kids are ready to go fight for us. They want to go put warheads on foreheads and turn people into hair, teeth, and eyeballs for our country. And I can't be more proud of the fact that uh, they're going to wear our nation's uniform. Nobody is more passionate about the Air Force Academy and its mission than Falcon baseball coach Mike Keselowski. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Mountain West Network studio. I'm Jesse Kurtz. Happy Veterans Day to those who have served and to their families. Mike Kozlowski, a vet himself, personifies what it means to fly, fight, win, the team's mantra. But not all victories are created equal. Some, as we're about to find out, have an extra special meaning. Upon these grounds walk America's finest leaders. The path is not easy, but that's intentional. This group craves a challenge. I always had the sense of being a part of something bigger than myself. Understand that uh, these young men and women that you get to meet while you're here, they've raised their hand and they've taken the oath. And that oath includes dying for our country if needed. Perhaps nobody takes more pride in the selfless commitment that's been made more than Mike Kozlowski. Cove, we're gonna go back to the flat tops. He's marched in their shoes as a baseball player and 1991 graduate of the United States Air Force Academy. He's unlike any coach I've ever had, um, but one of the biggest things is just his care for us in general. Love you, baby. I mean, he's not here to just coach us up uh, technically in the game of baseball, but uh, help us grow all around in our whole lives. I got Priest. He relates with us on a whole other level that other people maybe can't. So he definitely prepares us in a way to be a war fighter and at the same time, you know, he wants to develop us into better men, better husbands, better brothers, better sons. Present Art! Coach Kaz, as he's known here, Let's go, let's go, let's go! uses baseball as a platform to prepare his players for what lies ahead, teaching lessons he learned while serving two decades on active duty, including time as a C-17 pilot serving in the War on Terror. Operation Iraqi Freedom, Enduring Freedom, and being part of that uh, is special. And I was thankful to have been in the military. Uh, I knew nothing of the military growing up. I could hit a baseball, so I showed up here because I could hit. And four years later, they've asked me to go fly a $230 million airplane in a C-17. You know, we'd never want war in our country, but uh, once again, if it does happen, the young men and women all across our nation are we're ready to fight. While serving as a pilot, Kaz was always ready. At no time was that more evident than the day our nation changed forever. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. I was here during 9-11. I was down at the Academy Airfield teaching kids how to fly gliders and Cessnas. And it was a big, it was a big punch in the face as a, as a nation. And I wanted to get back in the fight. So I immediately called back to my old unit in Charleston and said, I'm willing to come back any chance, anyhow, any way. I'll do ground duty, whatever I can. I had to do my job. You know, our country called on us and we did our job. He says his most important missions while flying had very little to do with finding the enemy, rather returning the hero. I had the opportunity to bring back human remains and bring them back to Dover, Delaware. And that one really hit home, that uh, this is bigger than just me, this is bigger than my family, this is for our country. And these folks, especially on Veterans Day, have laid down the ultimate sacrifice. It's their life. It's a life-changing event. And uh, unfortunately, I've done it more than once. And that's the one area that I'll never forget. Despite retiring from active duty, trading the flight suit for pinstripes, hey, how are you, man? Awesome. Coach Kaz still encounters the heartache from the danger of the mission for those who selflessly serve. Two Air Force pilots were killed at Vance Air Force Base in Enid today. The Air Force Academy now says a cadet has died in a single engine plane crash in Texas. Two of his former players have died 
while flying in the past few years. These are the difference makers in our world. And yes, our, our job is a dangerous one. Our profession is dangerous. And to talk to these young men from high school, and then they come to this institution, and they pay the ultimate sacrifice, uh, there's a part of me that feels responsible to you. And that's the hard part for me to understand that uh, this is a calling, the big man upstairs, it was time, and but it is hard for me. And it's hard for our program. And it's hard to understand that we have lost two young men in the past two years that have given it their all because of the fact they're wearing our nation's uniform. I think it's something that we've all signed up to do and you don't really realize it until, until you lose somebody that, that signed up for that as well, raised their right hand to, to die for their country. The legacy of Travis Wilkie and Nick Duran will forever live on through this program with only the best of the best earning the right to wear Nick's number 25 and Travis's number 20. Nick was one of my best friends, the first person I met when I got to this place. And to be wearing number 25 this year in remembrance of Nick means so much more to me than anybody could ever imagine. So, you know, I just want to represent that guy in a great way and just put his name there. And last spring, with the Fallen Falcons serving as inspiration, Air Force took off on a journey for the ages. As soon as we got that momentum, it was pretty hard to stop. Oh my! Culminating in one of the greatest athletic feats in Academy history. Air Force at last, where's the crown? Winning the program's first Mountain West Championship. History all around in San Diego tonight. And they did so in Travis Wilkie's hometown of San Diego. One of the greatest things ever, it was so much fun. Getting the dog pile out there on the field um, with all, like my 25 best friends going out there together and dog piling and just knowing that like we accomplished our goal. That was the first time winning a championship like that. So running in from center field and diving on, it was just pretty awesome. And seeing just all the emotion from everybody, I'll never forget that night. I don't want to hear can't, I don't want to hear we won't. We will and we can. Uh, I want to take these boys to Omaha. I think we have the ability to go to Omaha and we're never gonna be satisfied until we are truly the best. But in the end, being the best on the field is a small fraction of why these kids are here. They are our nation's future, training, competing, and learning from a leader who understands what it means to conquer a challenge. He helps us to recognize what the mission is and what it's about and what this place is about and um, so that we don't go in afraid, but go in ready. Our mission is real simple, fly, fight, win. And when I talk about winning, once again, it's not the scoreboard. To me, winning is when these young men walk across that stage four years after they start and they throw their hat in the air in front of the 20,000 people of the Thunderbirds rip overhead, that they're ready. And the young men and women that go to this institution, they're ready. And that's how I'm gonna define winning here is when at the end of the day, are they ready to lead our country? Birds on two, one, two, birds. Let's go. See you, boys. Pretty special group there at the Air Force Academy, led by a man who gives his all every day to ensure their success. Happy Veterans Day. From all of us here at the Mountain West, we are very thankful for your service and your sacrifice to our great country. From the Mountain West Network Studio, I'm Jesse Kurtz.